I was thinking yesterday about what I really want and don't want in a DJ mixer or controller. And I made a list. I'm going to share it with you today. I'm also really curious as to what you want and don't want with a DJ mixer or controller. Let us know in the comment section. Now, once I get into this, there are going to be a lot of people who are going to say things like, well, I have this piece or that piece or this piece that's very similar to what you want. Yeah, but it's not everything I want. <laughs> so it, they're all missing something that I'm looking for or have something that I don't want in them. Some things people are asking for are things that really nobody wants. You know, I want one shaped like a monkey and I want one with 18 jog wheels and like, no one else is going to want that, but you want it. I'm looking at practical things that exist. And none of this stuff is fantasy. None of this stuff is science that hasn't been invented. It's all stuff that exists, yet it's not all in one DJ controller or mixing board. By the way, this video was brought to you by Hollywood DJ. They are one of our channel sponsors. Thank you, Hollywood DJ, for sponsoring this video. They're on 11th Street in Los Angeles check them out. I'm going to give you a link down here below. They're the ones that hooked me up with that DJM 800 that I was using for the casino gig. So thank you for that, Hollywood DJ. Thank you for sponsoring this video. Something you should know about me is that I'm a very meat and potatoes DJ. I'm also a mobile DJ. I do weddings and things, but I also do bars and clubs and such. But anyway, before I tell you what I want, I think it's important to tell you what I don't want. Excessive pads and effects with switches or knobs. I hate that. And the reason I hate it is because I don't use half of that stuff. I use very little of that stuff. I understand a sample pad or two, or maybe even four. I'm having a hard time with eight. And there's knobs and switches everywhere on some of these pieces. Some of them aren't that big and they're packed with this stuff that I'm not going to use. It's just not for me. It might be for the guy with the Vegas residency. It might be for the scratch DJ or for the person who likes to use air horns a lot. It's just not for me. I'm not using this stuff enough to justify all of this valuable real estate on a mixer or controller to be taken up by that kind of stuff. It can be scaled down. I don't even need any of it. As long as I can play my tunes and it sounds right, I'm happy. But yeah, I understand some people like it. A few things here and there might be okay, but if it wasn't there at all, I wouldn't miss it. Bluetooth. I don't want Bluetooth connectivity on the mixing board, and I'll tell you why. There's a couple of reasons. One, there's always going to be a latency issue. There's new Bluetooth that's coming out eventually that has ultra low latency, but there's still some latency there. I really hate mixing consumer grade things with pro grade stuff, and when you add Bluetooth, you do exactly that. This is a problem when you have several hundred people in a room and they all have Bluetooth devices in their pocket, my concern is that the band gets crowded and there could be problems and I don't like that. And the other thing is, I thought it was so cool when they stopped putting quarter inch jacks on phones. It has its advantages and disadvantages, but as a DJ it was an advantage because it gave me an excuse to look a party goer in the eye who said, can you play my favorite song off my phone? It gave me an excuse to look in the eye and say no. I don't have the tech to do that anymore because there's no longer a quarter inch jack. I can no longer get the little RCA into line to quarter inch stereo mini plug into their phone and play it. I want to have control over the quality of the tracks I play. I want to have control over the content of the tracks I'm playing. I'm going for premium audio. And if I'm playing something that someone's streaming off of YouTube and maybe a commercial pops up or something, I don't need that hassle. So, yeah, I don't want Bluetooth audio at all on anything that I buy for a mixer or a controller. And the other thing that I don't want is a large footprint mixer or controller. And I want something that's mobile, being a mobile DJ, or, you know, even at the bar club capacity, I want to be able to haul the stuff around without breaking my back. Sometimes I have very limited space. I don't need these big gargantuan pieces. I want a small, medium to small footprint. It's fine. But giant stuff, out of the question, don't want it. Some of the stuff that I'm asking for, a lot of the stuff I'm asking for, you can find in the giant pieces. 
put it in the small pieces. How do you do that? You eliminate the real estate of all the effects that you don't need. <laughs> so anyway, now that I've talked about that, we can get on with the things that I actually do want in a mixer controller. So here we go. Premium, balanced, XLR, and RCA outputs. I say RCA outputs because sometimes you want to hook this stuff up at home and you don't necessarily have the option to go XLR into things. So RCA is nice to have. And I've even worked at bars and clubs where I got to plug in through an RCA. It sucks, but that's what I have. But when I'm doing mobile stuff, I want balanced XLR out. And I want good outputs. I also want an XLR booth out. That's going to come in handy sometimes. Sometimes when you're working at a bar or a club, you're kind of far away from the dance floor area. You can't really hear what you're doing very well. So it's nice to be able to have a booth monitor. And you should be able to adjust the volume on that. Two premium USB sound card inputs. This is neat. I'm starting to see this on some of the premium pieces. I have a Pioneer DDJ, I think it's an S9 that has this, where you can plug two different computers, USB, into the mixer at once. And what that does is gives you the ability to switch from one computer to the next. Let's say, for instance, you were DJing at a club and you were doing a set from I don't know, eight to 10. And then someone else was gonna do a set from 10 to midnight. It's not a big deal to be able to use the same mixing board and just swap these computers out. You could plug two computers in at once and at the top of your line faders is a switch. You can choose between your first computer or your second computer. Alternately, if you're a mobile DJ and you love backup, you wanna run two computers at once just in case something crashes or whatever on, on your computer. You have your backup computer ready to go set up all you have to do is flick a switch and switch over to this second USB port where your second computer is, and you can run it. That's a cool feature. And a lot of this stuff, side note, is going USB-C now. It's not the, the big printer USB cables that used to be. A lot of it's going C. So it's not going to take up that much real estate to put this feature on a whole bunch of mixing boards and controllers. It does exist, and I like it. I'd like to see it in whatever my ultimate piece is. Two balanced XLR slash quarter inch combo microphone with correct impedance inputs with independent three band EQ per line. That's important. So many of the cool mixers I have from Pioneer and such, they've got an XLR input for a microphone, maybe two, but then they only give you like a high and low EQ. Well, if you know anything about audio, mid is vocals. And control of that mid is going to help a lot of you out, especially when there's feedback issues. It would just be really nice to, to have that control on a mixing board. And not have to feel like you need to buy this external mixing board for microphones to plug in to your controller or a mixer for DJing. We should only need one board. We shouldn't need multiple boards for this stuff. And a lot of you karaoke folks and people who do ceremonies like a three microphone option. I'll get to that in a little bit. But at least two would be nice with three bandy cues on them. The right impedance. There are controllers and mixers out there where the mic is hot. You've experienced this. I'm sure those of you who bought a lot of equipment it's because the impedance is wrong on the XLR input. They didn't put a lot of thought into it. It was an afterthought. They, they got the wrong thing. It's not the correct mic input. It'd be nice if it had switchable phantom power. Some microphones need phantom power, aside from just the regular mic input. It'd be cool to have that. Two, I don't need four. I don't need it. It takes up too much real estate on my board. Two line faders for your audio is all I want. Four, who uses four line faders? Not many of us. I know people who like to have a third option for emergency. Or if they're mashing up one track and they want to mix into another. But very few of us are actually using all four. We want four. We're not using four. I certainly don't use four. With pre-fade le listen or pre-fade level, the little lights that bounce up and down, got to have that. Graphic EQ, three band. And of course, the option to cue, which all boards have that I'm aware of. Independent auxiliary channel with an RC input 
and an XLR input. Let's see, if you do the RCA input on that, then you've got your third channel you're looking for. And it would be really cool if it had a GQ on it and it was switchable to mic. Think about that. You've got these two dedicated mic channels. Then you've got a third aux that you can switch to mic level. And it's already got the GQ on it. It doesn't matter to me if it's got big line faders on it. It could just be little knobs. But what are we really looking for here? We're looking for high, mid, low, and gain or trim. That's all you need. You don't need big line faders for this. So you get your third mic if you wanted it on that auxiliary channel. It would be useful for a lot of things. It would be cool if it was also switchable to a computer and somehow get a third line out of that. And that might give you your third line that you're looking for, you know, for that emergency mix-in that some of you want that, that third audio channel with. So anyway, monster volume with Q and output level indicator lights. Most mixers have this. Not every controller or mixer has that. They, they might have it per line, but not on the master. I think it's good to have on the master. Helps you achieve things like zero dB for your, your unity gain structure. A built-in mono switch. This has been around forever, and they took it away. Like recently on most pieces, you don't have it anymore. And the reason you don't have it is because the engineers are thinking, ah, you can just switch to mono on Serato or Virtual DJ or whatever you're using internally on the computer. What if I'm using records? You know, what if I just want to easily just switch from stereo to mono? Let's say that I'm playing newer tracks all night long. I like them in stereo, they sound great. And then I throw something on that's ridiculous, like ACDC, You Shook Me All Night Long. Okay, you know that song? If you've ever listened to it in stereo, the guitar and drums comes out of one channel and the vocals come out of another one, and the bass, it's ridiculous. That song sounds better in mono for most speaker configurations. It would be nice to be able to switch it easily without going into the computer with the mouse and going in the menu and trying to find all the stuff. Now, just a, a switch. On the top of your mixing board or controller, you could just flick it, and all of a sudden, you're in mono. I think that would be a really cool thing to have. I think it's practical. And it, it's something that existed for a long time and then it went away. Bring it back. We need that little thing. I need it anyway, and I think a lot of you would like it too. And last but not least, and this is the simplest thing in the world, an internal power supply with an IEC cable. These external power supplies, these these big, like, little, or they're little, like, plugs you plug in, these little bitty tiny things, and then there's this big block in the middle of the power cable. I, for, no, 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 no. Stop doing that. It feels cheap. And it is cheap. And if you're unplugging and plugging things in a lot, there's a lot of wear on that stuff. Give me something simple. Or I don't have to have a custom cable for it if something happens to it. Just give me an IC cable that plugs directly into this piece with internal power. But that's my wish list. What do you think, folks? I went practical. None of this stuff is science fiction. It all exists. I'm done. That's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I appreciate you guys tuning in so much. And, and thank you for your comments and anything you got down here. Oh, yeah, and by the way, if you could, be so kind as to hit the like button. I'd appreciate it. Practice and enjoy.